Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, are you ready for Easter? <laughs> you ready to open those Easter eggs and see if there's candy inside? Are you ready for Easter? Are we ever actually ready for Easter? Even those first disciples on that first Easter weren't ready for the good news. They weren't ready to hear that all of their fears, all of their disappointment had been overcome. <clears throat> that God had done something incredible beyond belief. They didn't know how to receive this good news. But eventually, eventually it sank in. And eventually the 11 and the women with them and the larger group of disciples became the core of a missionary movement that has continued all through these 2,000 years, continued to today, and involves us, engages us, makes us one of the apostles, those who are sent. I have a little test for you to see if you're ready for Easter. When you came in this morning, you may have noticed the pots out in front by the steps are planted with flowers now. Did you also notice that some of the pots are kind of crooked. At least one of them is a little bit broken. If when you came up the steps, you thought, or if we, when you came in to the narthex, you said to someone else, did you notice how crooked the pots are? Did you notice that some of those pots are broken, you're still bogged down in a pre-Easter mentality. If your first thought was, how beautiful the flowers are. If your first word to another person was, did you notice the beautiful flowers? <clears throat> that you're in an Easter mode. The resurrection of Jesus and the promise that we will also be raised from the dead changes our hearts. It changes us from being pessimists to being optimists. Now somewhere between those two poles is where we live our lives. We call it realism. We recognize that the world around us has all kinds of evidence that someone besides God is in control. Read the newspapers, listen to the news, drive through the city, and you can't help but be struck by the fact that there's an awful lot in this world that's broken. That's not the way God intends it to be. That's real. A realist sees the world the way it actually is. The pessimist, the pre-Easter person,
concludes, based on the evidence, that the world is a bad place, that chaos reigns. The optimist, the post-Easter Christian, <clears throat> looks at the evidence and says, God is at work overcoming this brokenness. This is not the final word. Poverty, oppression, hatred, racism, those are not the final word about how we live together on this green earth. The final word is that through the death and the resurrection of Jesus, every single one of us is raised up with him to a new dignity as children of God and sent to be representatives of God. It seems to me impossible for us to go out into the world to represent God's perspective and at the same time be bad-mouthing the world that God created. Rather, we have to be just overwhelmed with the joy of the good news that comes with the resurrection of Jesus. On the one hand, it is all about Jesus' resurrection. The focus on Easter and the focus throughout the church is that Jesus is alive. Jesus is at work in the world through the church. There's another message. It's not so much about Jesus. It's about you and me. That we have, through baptism, been raised to new life. Not a new life that we will embrace when we get to heaven, but a new life that we clothe ourselves in, in the here and the now. We walk wet. That is, every day of our lives, we recall that we have been baptized into the death and the resurrection of Jesus. As baptized children of God, we have the dignity of brothers and sisters of Christ. Do we see that in one another? Do we recognize that and honor that, that identity as children of God? Do we see that and honor that in each other? Or are we much more likely to find the flaws, the brokenness, the sinfulness in each other? We are evangelists. Like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we are gospel tellers. In our individual lives and in our life together as the people of God at Trinity, we tell, we enact the God's love. We gather each week to celebrate Christ's promise to be with us, to pour out his spirit on every single one of us. We gather. 
We feed on the very body and blood of Christ. And then we go. We go out to share that good news. To be good news to people around us, starting in our own homes, in our own families, in our own congregation, and rippling, as Jesus said, to the ends of the earth. We are here this morning because the ripples that began on that first Easter morning, 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 10 times as long as the U.S. has been around. For 2,000 years, the good news that Jesus is alive has been rippling throughout the world and throughout time. And it's rippling through us. We're not going to be obstacles to that rippling gospel. We're not going to be somehow stones caught in the, uh, with our, uh, our surface over the surface of the, of the pond. We're not going to be barriers. We're going to be the people of God who celebrate at our core, celebrate at our heart that God lives, that Jesus lives and reigns. So as we walk around the world, as we walk around our community, as we think about our church, we can have a pre-Easter mentality that's focused on the flaws, that's focused on what's wrong. Or we can have an Easter mentality that says, though it appears that the world is out of balance, is out of sorts. We are witnesses to a new reality that Jesus reigns. And that we, that we are part of that reign of God. Each one of us has a part to play in the reign of God. Each one of us is responsible in large or small ways, in a variety of ways. Each of us is responsible for being one through whom the gospel is expressed. When we forgive one another, when we care for one another, when we embrace the stranger, when we reach out to those who find themselves on the margins of our society, we are bringing good news. When we identify them whoever the they is, when we identify them first as creatures of God, people created in the image of God, when we see people first as reflecting the image of God, and only second, do we see them as we see ourselves as sinful, broken people? 
when we first see one another as children of God, we are Easter people, people of the resurrection. My prayer for each one of you this Easter, and my prayer for us together as a congregation this Easter, is that we will more and more and more each day, each week, each month, more and more embody the mentality of Easter people. looking for signs of God's reign, looking for the flowers, not necessarily ignoring the broken or the crooked planter, but focusing on the signs of God's love, the signs of God's reign. And we ourselves become signs. We become like the flowers out there. Yeah, a little bit less than perfect. But let's not focus on the things that we can point out in each other that are less than perfect. Let's focus on what's really important that you are, that I am, the child of God, created in the image of God, raised to new life through the resurrection of Jesus, <laughs> empowered by the spirit of Jesus and of his resurrection, empowered to be signs of God's reign. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.